Hello everyone and welcome back to a hamster cage tutorial. I am back with this adorable girl named Coco that I rescued a few days ago from a very small cage as you can see. Um, she's such a cutie pie but I knew the second I saw her that I was going to have to build her a brand new cage that she could run around in and obviously uh, that included going to Ikea and kind of making my own custom cage. As you can see, she didn't have a lot to work with. She kind of lived in that tube and she, she didn't have a lot of bedding. The wheel was too small for her to even get into, I think. She's quite a big hamster. So she was missing quite a lot. So the first thing I did as soon as I brought her back was to put her in a little sand bath. Because honestly, she I don't think she ever had a sand bath and she seemed to be cleaning herself and licking herself on the whole drive home so I just put her in there and it didn't take her long to find out that she could just dig and run around in it and I think she really enjoyed it. The second thing I did was to put her in my other hamster's old cage which is still a bit small but it was only temporary also please do not come for me for that wheel i know it's not the right wheel for these hamsters um i still had it from my previous hamster i mean i still have that hamster but i bought him a, a bigger wheel and because she didn't have any wheels i don't think she's ever been on a wheel i just wanted her to experience something similar it was only for a couple of hours and honestly i don't think she she used it at all she was too busy roaming around and absolutely destroying your ca the cage as you'll see later on um but i do understand that that's not the right wheel for her i got her a bigger one as soon as the stores opened and here she is just exploring a slightly bigger cage i was so excited to see her walk around and i i just couldn't wait to see her reaction to a cage of a, a decent size for her uh also it turns out she's quite the climber she was climbing up the walls for hours. I mean, she must have been exhausted. The next morning when I went to get her, she was just knocked out cold. <laughs> like she, she must have been climbing all night. Now, because I had to build her an entirely separate cage from the hamster I already have, this involved a trip to Ikea. So off to Ikea I went. I had already looked on the website and I knew I wanted one from the Plaza range. For whatever reason, the Ikea seemed to be out of stock of every single Plaza um, item, but I did end up finding the right one. And I went for the 80 by 55 centimeters. It was only 20 pounds and also the reason I chose this range of IKEA is because it's very lightweight compared to the, the previous cage I built and also it's detachable. You, you don't need any screws or anything like that. You can just kind of like assemble it, disassemble it, um, but it's still sturdy enough to stay put together. And also because I'm moving in about a month or so, like I'm moving quite soon, so I didn't want a huge cage that I couldn't really put in my car or just travel with um so for now I decided to go for this cage it was an ideal solution a very cheap solution and also it doesn't involve any tools which I think is just so important for so many of us who want to build a cage for our hamsters and maybe don't have the money to a buy all the supplies um b let alone the tools so <laughs> I thought that was quite neat um and it was quite a straightforward assembly just follow the instructions you just put it into the holes and then kind of tap it down so it locks into place and I, ideally I would prefer a cage that's a bit bigger um, I, I definitely think it's big enough but 
obviously if it were up to me i would have an entire room dedicated to cages and hamsters so here's footage of me absolutely struggling putting together the most basic ikea like furniture ever um but still struggling because you know what else are you gonna do that's just how it is that's just how it goes when you build ikea stuff it can never be so straightforward <laughs> So as you can see, I didn't fully assemble the Plaza kit because obviously I wanted an edge of it to be transparent and then I also wanted the top to have a lid that I made separately. And initially I was going to try and locate a piece of glass or maybe another IKEA like glass shelf that would fit the right dimensions, but again that was quite heavy, that was more money and also I'm moving soon so I thought for now, temporarily, um, I used acrylic glass, so it's just like a sheet of acrylic. Um, it was only like 20 pounds, and also I bought it, it was much bigger than I needed it to be, so it could probably be cheaper if you bought it <laughs> the right size. Uh, I didn't really bother, I figured, you know what, I can just cut it down with um, like those Stanley knives or the cutters. Um, which obviously didn't exactly go to plan, but that's what I chose to do because it's very lightweight, it's very affordable. I kind of cut it down, snapped it off. Uh, I was quite happy the first chunk I cut off. <laughs> it went it went quite well. It was quite quite straight. I did a little celebration dance, but the second one unfortunately snapped off and wasn't completely straight. And I debated getting a new one. I, I debated trying to find a way to fix it. Um, I decided to just keep this one because I'm probably going to replace it in about a month or so once I'm more settled um, and it definitely is sturdy enough and did the trick for this job but what I decided to do was just kind of fix the split part or the cracked edge with some good old-fashioned hot glue and it actually worked really well I made sure that the hot glue was not on the inside of the cage um, so that my little hamster little Coco couldn't access it so it was just on the outside but it definitely worked um, binding it back together it's a temporary fix obviously please do better than me <laughs> uh, I would definitely advise maybe like a, a piece of glass or a, maybe a thicker piece of acrylic and just make sure you don't snap it um, like I did And 
once I was done chopping that little piece of acrylic and also fixing that little crack in it, I decided to attach it to the front with, again, <laughs> a hot glue gun, which seemed like a genius solution. You know, hot glue gun glues everything. Turns out it doesn't. That was the worst idea ever. It did not stay into place and initially it looked really good. I was so proud of myself. What a quick way to finish off this cage even though it wasn't very pretty. Um, I knew it was temporary and then a couple seconds later I realized that it didn't work. <laughs> so it just came straight off. I needed to find another solution. So I went ahead and bought this double-sided tape. Um, it was a quite a good, good quality tape. Again, it doesn't look perfect. Um, you can definitely see the tape because it's colored, but it's very strong. It works really well. I'm very happy with it. I had to wait until she was awake to move her. <laughs> look at that wrecked cage, guys. Like she just spent all night absolutely tearing it apart. The water bowl was empty. It was full of chips, which soaked it all up. The wheel was now flat. <laughs> she dug herself a little hole. I was so happy for her. Um, but here she is wide awake on top of that house and I can only imagine this is what happened all night for her to absolutely wreck this house. Oh, no! That's <laughs> so I put her into my room again and I think she could smell below. I think they could smell each other. She was climbing up the walls trying to get to him. But I moved her into her cage. She's actually quite docile. She's quite easy to handle um she's a really chill girl when she's not in her cage and it was just so nice to see her roam around she was so excited i mean this is her first time ever probably uh i think ever being in a cage of that size she had no idea what to do with the wheel it took her a couple of minutes to figure it out but it was just so nice to watch her explore she seemed so happy to just be running around seeing everything um since then she's created a bunch of tunnels under that bedding um, and yeah, I, I was just so happy to watch her go. Uh, the second she figured out how the wheel worked, she was on it for hours. She just did not get off it. <laughs> she was so happy. She could probably run for so long. So yeah, that's, that's my tutorial. That's a very straightforward, very easy uh, video. Probably didn't need to be this long, but I love including footage of the hamsters. I mean, to me, that's the best part. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. Um, and I hope you enjoy the footage of her running around, but that's my tutorial for a quick, affordable, easy note tools cage that you can build for your own hamster. Um, and obviously because the range comes in different sizes, you can buy the size above. That's absolutely fine. It'll work the exact same way. So let me know if you guys try this or if you found this helpful, please comment down below. <laughs> just, just look at her run. She's just going for it. Uh, it makes me so happy. She's such a she's such a nice hamster. My other hamster is definitely a bit more shy. He's a bit more of a ghost, um, which is fine. I, I just like watching him, but she's definitely got an extravagant personality. If you're wondering what I did for the lid, I did the exact same thing as my previous video that I will link in the description box if you want to see how I achieved that. Um, there is a bit of a gap just because obviously it's a it's a bendy plastic. It's a blendy bendy acrylic Sheet, um, but I'm not too concerned. She won't be able to make her way up there. So That's something to keep in mind, but for now I'm quite happy with it and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video uh, If you do then please subscribe um, I do a bit of true crime, but I also love to do hamster content. So Please stay tuned and I will hopefully see you in another video. Bye.